Thank you for using TTL. What up, uh, though? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Let the people know who we got in the building and where it's kicking it. This is Mother. Also known. What's good with you? What's good? Also known as Detroit's Hitman. What up, though, with your nephew? You all right today? Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty good. Oh, we got the flow. You know, we don't do interviews. You know, you kick it with juice. You feel me? Um, yes, sir. Um, let's talk about, you know, you did you did, you did, did an honorable thing, I feel. And I want to talk about that and how you got yourself to do that. You know what I'm saying? You um, confessed to some, some, some murders that they didn't even know you did. And um, you freed Devontae Sanford. You know what I'm saying? Um, how we get to that? Yeah, so... um. How we got to it is, uh, he was set. To, he was set up by by two officers. Mm -hmm. How they why they chose him, I can't really say. Um, Did you know the officers? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Bet. Yeah. It was. Uh, I believe at the time, uh, one of them was Sergeant Tolbert. I think he was sergeant at the time. Mm -hmm. I know he later became Flint police chief. Um, I don't know if he's still locked up in the fed joint, but he got caught up in Flint. I believe in does with money. The other one was uh, a Detective Russell, who, uh, through Devontae's lawsuit, finally ended up getting fired. Um, and continued to try to play shit in the game on his way out the door. Um, why they didn't just decide to... First of all, how they chose him, I don't know. Why they chose him, I don't know. Okay. Um, and then, why, why they, you know, continued down the path to, to railroad him with the help of Kim Worthy really didn't make a whole lot of sense to me either. So you, um, so you but how I came to know that he was even, mm -hmm. you know, locked up for it is uh, Russell uh, took me to the bathroom in the, in, in the homicide in the second precinct. And um, it was all a setup to begin with. Uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't seen him, you know, through this whole process up until that point. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, when, this when you get arrested or this back when he cut, when they arrested him? No, this back when I get arrested. Okay. So he had already been locked up. How long then? Yeah, he had already been locked up uh, close to a year already. Okay. He had already been convicted and everything. Okay. Um, and so uh, I don't know that, you know, the, the, the whole asking me, do I need to go to the bathroom to get, get us off camera um, until until we actually start start the conversation. And uh, he's like a... He was like, uh, I know, I, I know you did a uh, Runyon. That was the street that it, that, that, that it happened on on the east side. And so, uh, what happened on Runyon? Like, can, uh, can you can you elaborate on what happened on Runyon to bring people up to speed? So it was a a, a spot, and uh, four people got killed in the house on Runyon. Okay. Uh, one woman and, and three men. Um, yeah. So uh, he uh. So, so I, I look at him, I'm, I'm using the urinal, and uh, I don't acknowledge whether or not, you know, whether or not I, I was the person who did it or anything, and uh, uh, what I did was, uh, I was like, oh yeah, you know what I'm saying, just, just hearing, just agreeing that, okay, I understand he, he heard that, that I was responsible for it, and so uh, he was like, that's impossible, so I look over my shoulder at him, because he's standing in the doorway, <coughs> and I said, uh, I said, uh, why you say that? He said his exact words. He said, we got the kid that did that. I looked at him. I said, impossible. He said, why you say that? I said, because I did that. Now, prior to this, I had, you know, hadn't been willing to go down this road or nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, when, when, when a grown man locks up a 14-year-old kid for murder, right. you know, he can't call him a man. He couldn't say, you know, his his. His, his natural instinct wouldn't allow him to say, we got the guy, we got the nigga, we got the man. You know what I'm saying? He couldn't say none of that. He said, we got the kid. Knowing he got a child. Kid, let me know. Let me know that it was actually a child. And, and, and if anybody was around Devontae when he was 14 years old, he came off as a child. Mm -hmm. um, he got some, uh, some learning defects. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh that, that at that time, I don't know where he is now, but at that time, put him behind the eight ball. Um, I bumped into him a few times in the county, and he seems to be he seems to be slow. Mm -hmm. um, 
whether he acknowledged that or not is, is a different story, but I've, I've had conversations with him. So, uh, he, uh, so, so when I said impossible, he said, you know, he said, why? Well, I said, cause I did that. He said, if you did it, you should be able to tell me something. Can't nobody else tell me. Mm-hmm. I said, the neighbor shot at me. And I guarantee you, he never should let nobody else again in his life. So when I, once I said that, by this point, I'm, I'm standing in front of the sink and he's directly behind me and I'm, I'm looking at him in the mirror mm-hmm. and I see in his face that he knew without a doubt that so I was the person responsible. His expression, that moment on, his expression changed. His expression, he never, he, he, 100%, he mm-hmm. knew it. He knew it. I mean, they, 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 when I ended up, so I'm, I'm going to get to it. So, so he never said anything else to me from that moment on, not one single word. <laughs> there was a point in time where he, you know, when I threw my whole crop process he got on the elevator with my lawyer and he told my lawyer to tell me like and don't tell him not to say he did that like they you know in between him Kim Worthy and Sergeant Sergeant Tolbert they did everything in their in they, in they power to make sure that this didn't come to light to make sure that you know that this didn't, didn't get, get, get didn't get brought up and so uh, the uh, his lawyers they want to tell his lawyers when they would come see me one of the things, and even my lawyer, they would always ask me, like, I don't understand how he knew where these bodies were at if he wasn't in that house. It's not making sense. You got to explain to us, like, you know, how he knew where these bodies were at, how he knew. And I used to be telling them, like, I can't explain it. I said, maybe he went in the house after it was off after everything was done. I said, I can't tell you how he knew. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Come to find out, they, they, they drew the picture the way a child would draw it and had him sign it. Like he drew it. So the whole time they un- they operating under the premise that he know where these people was at in the house and he never knew nothing. He was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and they decided, you know, like this is the road we going down. Right. And, and they stuck to it. From what I understand, originally he told them like him and some of his friends did it. But keep in mind, his friends is, is kids like him. So so from, I don't know how much of this is, you know, it, it's factual in terms of like 100% accurate. Well, this is legendary. They go to the friend's house Mm-hmm. When they go to the friend's house and when they knock on the door, you know, their mama's answering the phone because, you know, it's five, six in the morning. They got to go to school. They're like, my baby ain't killed no motherfucking body. He got to go to school in the morning. Keep in mind, at 14, you still you're either in eighth or ninth grade. So they in either middle school or just started high school. And and, and so uh, they realize, like, oh, this ain't, this ain't an accurate depiction of whatever he told them. However, they got this information out of them, it wasn't accurate. So what I also understood what they did was why they originally had him down in homicide. They had a canine unit at the scene. Well, he goes to the abandoned house. And they take the canine paperwork and they change the address from the abandoned house to his address and take it to the judge and go get a warrant to go pick him back up. And then that's when they write the statement, have him sign it like he wrote it, mm-hmm. like the shit he said, draw a picture of, you know, of a, of a room with some thick figures on the floor and some square couches and say that he drew this picture. Come to find out, he didn't do none of this. But once again, I left that circle back to the fact that he had some learning disabilities, at least mm-hmm. in my opinion. Um, yeah. and, and I understand that actually took the test that he got a couple points higher than whatever it is when you consider mentally effective, you know what I'm saying? So you can't technically put that label on them, but, you know, when you throw in that line, and you're 14 years old on top of it, and your mama throw you to the wolves, because let's be clear, there couldn't be none of this question without his mama's permission. So, um, so she threw him to the wolves, you know what I'm saying? He had, a, he had an auntie who was fucking with a nigga that was a Detroit police officer who tried to save him, and he ended up getting locked up for perjury. You Get know? Um, yeah, it was just a... Just, it, 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 Kim Worthy ain't no better. You know what I'm saying? She did everything she could for nine and a half years to make sure that little nigga stayed locked up. And like, they knew from jump start. See, I thought they just found this they information knew, out. They knew. Yeah, no, they... they so, so he had been... In, in like the, the the juvenile center and all that, but as soon as he got convicted, they knew and they and, and, and they let they, they made sure it stayed buried for either eight and a half or nine and a half years, or however long he ended up being locked up total total. Like they made sure that it never came out, you know, or or they try to make me seem like to be the liar to you know that the, the police would stand up individuals and come to find out, you know, now now they now they piece, piecing it together that. These niggas ain't who they thought they was. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, my paperwork, my original cop, cop was mm-hmm. 50 to 100, but you can't testify for Devontae. Signed by Kim Worthy. Get out of here. Signed by Kim Worthy. 
So they would be. You know what I did? Uh huh. I turned it down. I didn't take it. Why? Why? Why you didn't take it? Go ahead. I wasn't at that point. At that point, I wasn't willing to testify for Devontae. Mm -hmm. But at that point, I didn't want to close that door. I didn't want to make it impossible for a fourteen-year-old kid wrongly convicted of a crime he didn't commit to continue to be locked up. That's real. His lawyer got this bar, you know what I'm saying, a lawyer who, who convinced him to take that cop. And keep in mind, and this is another part of it, let's, let's be honest, where we from, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, your mama <coughs> loves you more than anybody, or supposed to, right? right. So at some point, he had to tell his mama, like, Ma, I didn't do this shit. Even if, he, even if he admitted to it, let's say he admitted to it at some point because he thought it was his street cred or whatever the case may be, or because he was too stupid, too retarded, whatever, however you want to put it, to say, hey, I didn't do it. Or maybe he did tell the police this, and they and they, they lied even about that part, right? right. But let's say he let's say he did tell the police at some point he did. At some point he he understood how dire going to prison was, and at some point he told his mama, "Mom, I didn't do this. Mom, mm -hmm. you gotta believe me, I didn't do this." She was never on the news prior to him getting that getting ready to get that money. She was never on TV. Where? Why, why are they doing this to my son? Right. I need y'all help. I need somebody to help me. You know what I'm saying? That's real. No, I'm sure that little nigga was bad. I'm sure that nigga came up like all of us. You know what I'm saying? It was in the street, running around, doing, trying to be grown. You know what I'm saying? But that didn't make him no killer. Right. And that didn't make him at the at the moment when you know when that when that when that gavel about to bang and they about to get in forty years. That didn't make him not tell his mama like mom. I, like look, I can't do this. Like I didn't. I haven't got myself into something I didn't really understand. Mm. I don't. I, I didn't realize I wasn't never gonna come home again. That's real. You know what I'm saying? At some point, he told his mama, you know, like, Ma, I need, I need some help. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't never there. I never saw her on TV prior to, you know, he about to get out. He about to get $400,000 for, you know, the wrong, you know, for being locked up for all that time. You know, they, they, gave, they started giving the $6,000 a year out, and, and let alone the lawsuit money. That's when I started seeing her on the news. That's when I started seeing her say, hey, my son didn't do this. But, you know, where, where was she at during the whole trial process and all that? Right. Where was that love then? Where was that back in then? You know what I'm saying? That's the person who's supposed to be stumped down for you. No doubt. Why they interview this nigga and, and get him to confess if his mama was sitting there with him? For real. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't, it ain't you know, the, the, the police is responsible for what they did. Jim Worthy is responsible for what she did. And his mama is responsible for what happened too. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah, yeah. But, but but my original my original plea was 50 to 100. You can't testify for Devontae. I wouldn't accept it. Not, like I say, like, not because, you know, like, the time was too much, because I ultimately ended up taking it, but, you know, she did, she took the stipulation out of it. And I wish I, I wish I had signed the original agreement, so that way I had it in right. That way everybody could see it. That's right. But well, I know it happened. No you ain't got no reason to lie. Right, you ain't got no reason to lie. You've been, you been telling everything. Not only that, the media has always, you know, one of the things I've heard in the media is they've always wanted to know, like, why would he offer the cops to begin with? Y'all got him... Oh, it don't make sense. Tell us yeah, why. That's because they didn't want none of this to come out. Mm -hmm. They didn't want it to be known. They didn't want, and, and like I say, Ken Worthy's signature is on my paperwork. Not nobody else's. Not, not the prosecutor who tried the case. That's not who signature on my paperwork. Ken Worthy's did. That they tired of. Excuse me. Go ahead, go ahead. That, that woman, that woman, um, I find a task force to figure out how I knew Devontae. And they came up with nothing. And yet still, she wouldn't let him go. Wouldn't admit. As a matter of fact, how about this part? This is really going this, this is really about to fuck you up. You have one minute remaining. Go ahead. They let Devontae out of prison. They like to let Devontae out of prison and never dismiss the charges. Get yeah, out of here. Out of prison, convicted of four murders. You know when they dismiss the charges? When? With the statute of limitations on charges, that police officers ran out. Get out of here! Now that was dirty. He was out for almost a year. He was out for almost a year, convicted of. If you look him up on Otis or anything, it say he was convicted of four murders. Uh, he didn't uh, dismiss the charges until until a year after he it, it, because the statute of limitations on being able to charge the police ran out. You got something to say to Devonte? And I, and I want you to call back, but you got something to say to Devonte? I'm sorry? Do you got something to say to Devontae? Oh, I'll call back to that. Oh, All right, yeah. hang up. And I, yeah, we got to go to count now. So I'll catch up with you a little bit later after, after a while. Okay, bet. I'll be waiting on you to we'll call.
I appreciate right. you calling, nephew. You feel me? Call back, and we yes, gonna sir. finish this. All right. All right. Peace. Thank you for using GTL. There y'all have it. See, here with Juice, kicking it with Juice. We go get it from the horse's mouth. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna put nothing in there. I ain't gonna get my my opinion on it until after they finish elaborating on it from their mouth. I want my my viewers to um. Get to know these individuals that the media put out there so you can hear the other side of it. You know, y'all get to read the reports of um, the crime and then y'all hear what the um, the court say, what happened in court. Most most guys don't ever get on the stand and say they side of it, they cop out or whatever. So now what we going to be bringing forth, you're going to be hearing, hearing from the individuals themselves what it actually happened. You know what I'm saying? What was going through their mind and what, you know, the things that they can't talk about. But what I'm going to need y'all to do, you know what I'm saying, tap in, like, and subscribe. Let's build this up. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to bring you the raw and uncut from the horse's mouth. Thank y'all for tuning in, kicking in with juice, and I will be back. It ain't over yet. We just getting started. Salute to everybody that tuned in. I'm just learning how to work this, so y'all bear with me. Um, Barb Brown, best friends. Ryan, Ryan Road, that's what's up. Salute to all y'all. I'll be back.